Hi guys, James from DVG here and welcome to another video. As you can see, the sisters so far are done and there's a couple of little additions. But first of all, um, yeah, it's almost the end of the year. Um, Christmas was, um, well, depending on the way you do time, last week, last Wednesday. I hope you guys had a great Christmas and got lots of lovely toy soldiers and stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, my Christmas was um, not bad, on the grand scheme of things. Anyway, so, before we uh, go on to the New Year's greetings. So yeah, this is the uh, Sisters of Battle Army set that I got for my birthday. Well, I got, I bought it myself. Um, but there's a couple of little additions. First of all, there's the Rhino. That was donated to me by um, one of my clients. He sent me uh, a couple of Razorbacks and um, a Predator. And I cobbled this together from the Predator because the Predator didn't have the side sponsors. They were going to go into my 30k Dark Angels. But with the new Dark Angels book coming out next year, I thought I'd save up some money and do 30k properly with 30k vehicles. So I'm going to be getting some 30k rhinos, some uh, Demios pattern rhinos for those, um, as well as hopefully a Primark and some lovely um, wing type stuff, if you know your Dark Angels. Anyway, there's an additional three Arco Flagellants to make a squad of six. And as you pan across, you'll see that there is not one, not two, with three Penitent Engines. Yes, I got another two Penitent Engines on eBay. So, this little force here. Um, this is a Vanguard. I'm running the Battle Sister Squad as Seth Celestines, uh, which is basically the veterans. So this is a Vanguard, so it's four command points. Um, it is 627 points, so about 650. I can easily fold it into my Imperial Guard Force, even though the bases are slightly different. I've used different coloured tufts on these guys, but it shouldn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, so this is it, this is them, this is, this is what we've been waiting for all these years. I have to say, even with the duplication of miniatures, because there's only three sculpts of Seraphim, three sculpts of Arcoflagellant, uh, six sculpts of the Battle Sisters and the Canoness actually is a war gear is incorrect with the weapon she has. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I'm not disappointed. I know some people were with the uh, sickle pose miniatures, but I'm not disappointed at all. And considering for both birthday and Christmas. I was given Games Workshop vouchers, so when the, the rest of the army is released, which I believe is sometime in January, this will be expanded quite rapidly. Um, and I have my painting break in March, so with a bit of luck, in March I'll have a larger Sisters of Battle army that I can take to different places. So, without further ado, let's have a look at some of the miniatures. So I'm going to move further in. I'm going to start with the Canoness and we'll talk about why she is armed incorrectly for what she has. Um, I've gone for silver armour and purple robes. Um, purple, or oh, focus, is a hard back to my original Sisters Army back in 4th edition. Because my first ever Sisters Army was obviously our Order of Martyred Lady because... It was 1998, and everyone painted what there was in the box. So yeah, she's armed with a power sword. She has the Rod of Office, which is all good for now, but in order to have the Rod of Office, you also need to have a bolter, but no. She's armed with a plasma pistol. So that could be a typo in the... What are you doing, camera? Come on, focus. There we go. No, focus. There we go. It could be a typo in the Codex. It might come up in the FAQs. Um, 
but it makes very little sense that you do a model that doesn't actually conform to the rules in the book or it could just be you can turn her into a close combat beast and that stick doesn't do what the rod of office does now the rod of office is very cool it extends her aura ability by three inches so she has a three inch or um aura ability which is reroll ones i believe so let's have a look at everyone's in runner all i've done is i went through and found all the purity seals i could find whacked them on the doors standard weathering although in this light it doesn't look too good uh, there wasn't any copulas, so I used, just used the hatches and stuck them over. And the storm bolter is from uh, Lehman Russ. Archive flangulants. This one, once it focuses, is the endurant. Uh, you can tell that she is a she because clearly she is a she. Isn't the endurant because I've painted her bodysuit purple so she stands out and also she has a golden cranial cap the rest I've painted come on, focus 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 I know it's focusing on the stuff behind and I shouldn't do this but come on, focus there we go the rest I've done in greys and browns um, but the annoying thing is I'll show you on this one those tendrils, those flails, are quite brittle. This one broke while painting and the flail just pinged off somewhere in my kitchen. So I just painted the, uh, painted the end black and, you know, it's battle damage. There's nothing I can do about that at all. So, the Battle Sisters. The Sister Superior. The chain sword and bolter. I don't know if you tell but I've gone a little bit further with the highlights on the leather straps and the grenades and the faces have a two level highlight on. Um, I went for a very simple very quick scheme but I think it works very well. This is the uh, it's immaculate, um, the stick, the shiny stick that makes them do stuff better. I think it's, I uh, made them use an extra act of faith so they can use an extra miracle dice. But yeah, these are lovely, lovely miniatures. Now, the Flamer Dude, or Dudette. The actual model has what appears to be a heretic that she's just melted with a Flamer. I thought that looked awful looked out of place so what I did was I um, trimmed quite a bit of the detail off with a really sharp knife so it's quite flat and then just put my base material over the top so she's now got a foot on a rock which I think is far more appealing than the silly set on fire thing that it was I'm just going to look at this. Is probably my favourite pose the advancing and running forward. It's just the way they've sculpted it with the flowing robes. It just, yeah, just looks really cool. Right, now we're on to oh, let's move my, Sister Repentia. Now, Sister Repentia, they're more expensive than the Space Marine. 13 points a model. They have no armour. They're armed with a penitent eviscerator, which means that even though they're weapon skill 3, they hit on 4s. They have 2 attacks each. So this squad can knock out 8 attacks, hitting on 4s, strength 6, the eviscerators, so I think it's minus 3, 3 damage or something like that. Or minus 2. Anyway, yeah. They're mediocre at best. They do have a five up feel no pain. We're discussing a resilient, that was what you want to call it. Um, the whippy girl, in all honesty, she's a character, so 
that can't be picked out. Um, which is a really good base for a conversion of a um, second Canon S. So if you can get hold of one on eBay and you have some of the smaller, maybe Imperial Guard uh, weapons spare, uh, she'll make a really good um, close combat Canon S. But apart from that, so why do we have them? When the unit of Sister Repentia, that's the Sister Repentia, not the Repentia Superior, because she is a separate unit, when these girls die, you gain a miracle dose. That's it. That's why people have them. So you should, on the battlefield, you should never see a unit smaller than, um, bigger than four. And you'll probably find them right at the front, so they die, and you get that miracle dice. That, I, from what I can see, that is the only reason you'd have these girls in your army. Unless you're doing Order of the Bloody Rose, and you want to go full on charge the enemy and hit them with sticks. And then you'll have a full on unit of ten, including the uh, Repentia sister. They get out of a rhino, because that's the only way they're going to stay alive long enough. The rhino I have is for the um, Archive Lanterns. Yeah, so they're nice, they're, they're amazing models. They're just a bit poo, in all fairness, just a bit poo. But they are amazing models. So, without further ado, let's have a look. Come on, focus. Focus. There we go. All right. So again, there's also, as I said, this is an amazing base for a conversion. So just chop the whips off, give her a pistol and some sort of blade, and away you go. This girl here is one of my favourites. With the chains, obviously this could end up being a bit of a problem putting them in the case because those chains are probably going to break like the Arco Confusion Flails, but you don't have to put them on, they just look very cool. We have this girl here. Yeah. Great, there's a bit, a bit of a chastity belt thing going on there, but yeah, these are very, very cool. And the good thing about those is, like Space Focus, like Space Marines, now you can see where the power armor actually plugs into um, the parts of the body, which is very cool. Right, Seraphim. Now, those of you who saw the pictures, could you focus? Okay. As you saw the pictures with the scene, they had these girls separate, not glued onto the uh, flight stand. I am not a very big fan of these flight stands. So basically what, so what I did was I super glued a paper clip to their feet, attached the paper clip to a stand, what I use for my painting stand, which is um, paint pots. And just painted them like that and then afterwards glued them onto the base with a little bit of super glue for the main joints at the back and some PVA glue for a secondary joint because you always need two points of contact with this sort of thing otherwise they will just break off. I've got to find a way of putting them in a box so they don't break off which is going to be fun. Anyway that's the Seraphim. Now Penitent engines. I have three of them. This is the maximum you can have in a unit. And to distinguish them, all I've done, if I should have thought about this, all I've done is on two of them, on focus. On two of them, I've repositioned the arm. So 
This one's reaching out to give you a hug, which is with heavy flamers and buzz saws is what you want to get hugged by. There's the standard one in its running man pose. And there's this dude here running really, really fast, being all streamlined. Um, with the colour scheme I've chosen, these are really easy to paint. It's just silver highlighted with more silver. So yeah. And with their um, chain blades, they get five attacks each. So that's 15 attacks with things like strength eights, massive minuses. Um, those guys, if they make it across the battlefield, will be chopping up heavy infantry and vehicles. Obviously, um, two heavy flamers each is nothing to be sniffed at either. So yeah, on to my order and my conviction. So these are going to be from my own order, which is Order of the Ardent Thorn. Uh, I will be using the conviction of the Valorous Heart, which is the um, AP-1 weapons don't count, and with your standing within... Uh, the range of the Imagifier, which is basically like the Stick Lady, but with the biggest stick. Minus two weapons. Don't count. So there'll be a number, number of Imagifiers, all with the same thing. All the sisters with a nice little bubble. So basically, um, Space Marine Devastator Doctrine is not going to be as nasty for these girls as it would be for anyone else. Or any other army that has... Lots of minus one weapons like Necrons. Lots of minus two weapons. So there you go. Um, the other one I quite like a lot of is, um, I think it's already Ardent Shroud, which is you can advance and still fire your weapons as if you hadn't advanced. Which, when you have a bucket load of Storm Bolters, bucket load of Heavy Flamers, because I'm planning on having more Battle of the Sister Squads with with Storm Bolters. I'm also planning on having quite a large number of, um, I think they're called Mortifactors or Mortifiers, which are basically the sister battle version of Penitent Engines. They are armed with flails, which give them, I think, 18 attacks each. It's either 18, 16 or 18 attacks each. I mean, strength five minus one, one damage, but you know, it's, it's death of a thousand cuts when you've got five of them running in at you. That's a ridiculous. Amount. Anyway, um, but also they can have assault heavy bolters so they can move, they can advance, they can fire the heavy bolters as if they hadn't moved or advanced. And they're still weapon skill and ballistic skill three plus. So that's all incredibly good fun. Um, yeah, I'm not planning on having the Exorcists purely because the new Exorcist model is a bit shit. I don't like the new Exorcist model. So, uh, yeah. What I might do is do what I did before if I'm going to do Exorcists, and that's buy the emulator kit, which is probably going to be the same kit as the Exorcist, and then just get um, a Space Marine Whirlwind turrets. That's what I did before with... Uh, my sister's the battle worked very well. Anyway, that is it. I've been rambling on for quite a while. So if you're still with me, thank you very much. Um, what remains to me to say is um, we're coming up to New Year. So a very happy New Year and prosperous one to you all. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Um, links in the description to all our affiliates and sponsors. There's a special one for Goblin Gaming that will get you 20% off. If you use that link, um, there's Patreon as well. Um, hopefully, we'll be having proper battle reports next year, which is I'm trying, which is why I'm trying to get as much of my variety of armies built and painted as possible, so we can have a nice variety of armies to do in our battle reports. Um, yeah, and without further ado, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.